Welcome to the Choose You Netcast. This is Jim Langlois with the word from Joshua 24, 15. Choose you this day whom you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's my prayer that this netcast will encourage and cheer you on as we join forces to draw the line in the sand, defending our faith and our households in the resurrection power of Jesus. Join me each weekday as we dig deeply into God's amazing word and bring up the rich treasures of his blessings. Are you ready? Choose you this day whom you will serve. But that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house. I said, choose you this day who you will serve. But that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house. Good morning, NetWorld, and thank you for tuning in. Today, I'm going to talk about joy, trials, patience, wisdom, and trust. Let me read to you Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. It says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Have you ever heard someone say, I've lost my joy? Many times their next comment is, and I no longer have the strength to go on. Well, maybe you have even said that before. I know I have. But notice it's the joy of the Lord that's our strength. It's his joy, not our joy. We've been looking in the wrong place. The prophet Samuel said when times got bad for King David that he encouraged himself in the Lord. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 6, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Let me say that again. But David strengthened himself in In the Lord his God. The New King James Bible titles Habakkuk chapter 3 verses 17 through 19 a hymn of faith. Listen to this. It says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high hills. Are you feeling sorrowful and depressed? Has it felt like people have been stoning you? Is the fig tree not blossoming in your pantry looking bare? Well, if you've lost your joy, so what? Go to his word and get his joy. You'll never be the same. It's great to know that the source of our joy is not in us, but it's in the Lord. Why? Because his joy never gets depleted. There is always plenty for everyone. It's a never-ending eternal supply. His joy is ripe for the picking. Do you know where the garden is? Yes, it's in that book called the Bible. It's the Word of God. Then, reading James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Well, what? We should rejoice when we fall into trials? Well, yes, the word says trials means a testing, a trying, or a temptation that will produce a proving. Is it from God? Well, no. As a matter of fact, it says in verse 13 that God tries no one with evil. However, there's an adversary that would like for you to fail. Verse 16 tells us how good God is. James chapter 1, verses 16 through 17. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. In the rest of the chapter, verses 18 through 27, He guides us how to win these battles. Need some help? We'll get into the word. Listen to 1 John 2, verse 14. I have written to you, 
fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. And then reading Psalm 119, verse 9, it says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Remember, if you've lost your joy, so what? Go to his word and get his joy. You'll never be the same. The power of his word will enable you to count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Reading a little further in James chapter 1, verses 3 through 4, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Oh, please, do I have to be patient? Well, if I want to be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing, I do. If you're anything like me, you may have a problem with patience at times. Many times, in our impatience, we make mistakes we wish never happened. Sometimes a little red tape gives us time to think and pray. Maybe a little traffic jam or situation that does not allow us to buy or do something the very minute we want it to happen can actually be a blessing. There are several things I've wanted to happen in my life that I'm really glad never happened. I can see on this side of my impatience, wisdom was not in abundance at the time. There are also several things where impatience influenced my decision and I ended up with something or a situation I did not need or want. The word perfect has to do with being mature. I don't want to lack anything, so I guess I need to understand the value of patience. I like the message version. James chapter 1 verses 3 through 4 in the message says, You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. The Living Bible says it great too. It says, for when the way is rough, your patience has a chance to grow. So let it grow, and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything, strong in character, full and complete. People talk about open and closed doors. Sometimes an open door spells trouble. And a closed door is the grace of God. Thinking before you leap is good wisdom at times. You see, wisdom and patience work together as a team. And James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Let's read James chapter 1 verses 2 through 5 together. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Well, when do we need joy? We need it during trials. And what do we need during trials? Patience. So what should we ask for while we are counting it joy during trials while being patient? We should ask for wisdom. Well, who should we ask for this wisdom? Well, we should ask God. And what will God do when we're counting it joy during the trial, being patient, and asking him for wisdom? He will give it to us liberally. What does it mean when it says without reproach? It means God will give us the advice we need without fault-finding. And as he helps us through difficult situations, he won't berate or upbraid us, calling us stupid or dumb. He's a loving and compassionate God. He's a father. He won't rebuke us for asking. He teaches and guides us. He never disqualifies us. He responds positively and not negatively. And that's what I call perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Well, what will happen if we lose the joy, become impatient, and fail to ask? Well, like the scripture says, we will be imperfect, incomplete, and lacking everything. Does this require our faith? Yes, it definitely does. As a matter of fact, James chapter 1, verses 6 through 7 in the message says it this way, Ask boldly, believingly, without a second thought. People who worry their prayers are like wind-whipped waves. 
Don't think you're going to get anything from the master that way. Now let me read James chapter 1, verses 2 through 7. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he'll receive anything from the Lord. You see, if we want to be perfect and complete, lacking nothing, not only do we need his joy, patience, and wisdom, but we also need to believe he will give us his wisdom. When we ask, we are to ask in faith, believing to receive. I like the way the Amplified Version of the Bible defines believe, It uses the definition, trust in, rely on, and adhere to. Faith towards God is trusting in his word, relying on his word, and adhering to his word. Now that's faith. It's not blind faith. It's faith in his word. Notice verse 3. It clearly names the trial as the testing of your faith, not the testing of your unbelief. So during a trial, get his joy from his word. Be patient. And once you've asked him for wisdom... Trust in, rely on, and adhere to his word, knowing what he had promised he will give to you. What would faith do? It would begin to praise him in advance because it knows his word is true. So raise your hands to him and say, Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the wisdom I need in the trial I am facing. I receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, there's one thing that you can trust. Mark chapter 13, verse 31 Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So many people are looking for something they can trust, something that will not disappoint, something that will not fail or come to an end. Today, everything is changing so fast, it's difficult to keep up. Information today is obsolete tomorrow. Great inventions today become boat anchors tomorrow. You wait for new technology to buy the right electronic device, and in a year, You don't want to carry it around for fear of embarrassment. There is, however, one thing that never changes. There is one thing that will never grow old and pass away. There is one thing you can forever trust completely. It will never fail. Its technology will never grow old or obsolete. You can bet your life, your success, your life, your marriage, your everything on it. Because it's not man's word. It's not man's invention. It's not man's wisdom. It's the word of God. It's 100% accurate, 100% correct, and 100% the answer. Where is it? Possibly within reach on your living room coffee table. Have you ever said, God, will you please speak to me? Where are you? He's saying, hey, I'm over here on the coffee table, and I have so much to tell you. Wow, our time is up, and I got to go. See you tomorrow. You have been listening to the Choose You Netcast with Jim Langlois. If you have enjoyed this program, you can find out more about Jim Langlois Ministries on the Master's House website at tmhnow.org. That's tmhnow.org. On the media tab, you can listen to many more messages, subscribe to my daily devotional emails, and follow the link to my blog site. If you'd like to write me or become a financial partner with this ministry, my address is the Master's House, Post Office Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. That's the Master's House, Post Office Box 1568, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23116. Online donations can also be made at tmhnow.org, and my email address is pastorjim at tmhnow.org. This is Jim Langlois saying be blessed, you and your whole household. Until next time. Choose you this day, but that's for me and my house, me and my house, me and my house.